All right, everyone, I'm joining every other foreign YouTuber that comes to Lithuania and making a Lithuanian food video. Today, we will look at some of the dishes you must try in Lithuania, as well as mention a few restaurants where you can try them. We won't be covering every single Lithuanian dish, so if you notice that we missed out on something important, write it in the comments so that others can check it out too. Joining me for today's food-based video is a special guest. Jesse is a German medical student studying here in Vilnius, Lithuania. She has some great content on TikTok as well as on Instagram, so be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link to her channels in the video description. Our video will be broken down into three sections. First will be the eight dishes we tried. Next, we'll mention some of the other foods that we didn't get to try. Finally, we'll look at some of the restaurants in Lithuania that offer these dishes. So let's get started. First, let's mention the common Lithuanian drink known as gira, which is the same as kvas. This is a drink made from fermented bread and has a number of variations. Some restaurants serve it carbonated while others don't. Some versions are lighter while others have a darker look and deeper flavor. It's worth trying at least once, I'd say. But the first dish you must try is shaltibarsche. It features in a lot of Lithuanian tourism promotional material since it's such a unique dish. It's a traditional cold beetroot soup. Do you want some? Cold. Cold. Literally translating to cold borscht, this bright pink cold soup is based on two main ingredients, kefir and beets. Kefir is a fermented milk drink that has a consistency somewhere between a heavy cream and yogurt. The beets are grated up and mixed in. This dish is served with boiled potatoes and chopped up hard-boiled egg. Dill is the other important ingredient that goes on top to flavor the soup. The next dish is called kepta duona. This literally translates to fried bread, a description that couldn't be any more clear. This dish is often eaten as an appetizer or as a bar snack and consists of cut up strips of black bread fried in oil. This is topped off with bits of sauteed garlic and served with either melted cheese or a cheese sauce. It's super filling and goes well with beer. Third up is the popular tzepaline, or tzepalinas if you're talking about a single piece. This is a potato dumpling with a meat filling. The outside is a thick layer of starchy grated potato, while the inside is almost like a small meatball. There are a few variations for how this is served, but it's usually topped off with spirguche, which translates to pork cracklings. But I just call them bacon bits, even if it's not fully accurate. A gravy or meat sauce is also sometimes covering these dumplings, usually served on the side is sour cream. Another variation has these dumplings cut in half and fried, which in my opinion is a bit tastier. Oh, and the fun fact about this dish is that the modern name, Zeppeline, comes from the Zeppelin airship that came about in the 1800s. The next three dishes are also variations of meat and potato combinations. Jermechupline are fried pancakes, which originate with the Samogitian people of Lithuania. These fried pancakes are thick and have a meat filling and served with sour cream. Pulvinebline is a dish that literally translates to potato pancakes. These are made from grated potatoes and held together with flour and egg and are fried until crispy and golden. Again, these are served with sour cream. The final meat and potato dish we tried was Bolvu Plukštenis. The most simple way for me to describe it is a mashed potato and meat pie. I guess it's somewhat similar to a shepherd's pie in some ways, and this dish is topped off with spirguche and served with sour cream on the side. Ditching the potatoes, we also ordered palendele. This is a traditional Lithuanian stuffed cabbage roll. Similar to cabbage rolls in other Eastern European cultures, these consist of rice and ground meat wrapped up in cabbage and cooked. These are often served with boiled potatoes and topped off with grated carrot. The final dish we tried was kepte vashkeche for dessert. These are made with curd or cottage cheese, mixed with flour and then fried. Usually served on the side is sour cream and jam. Some of the things we didn't get to try on this particular day included koldune, which is a meat-filled dumpling, similar to tortellini or gyoza, as well as kibine, which are baked pastries often filled with meat. There are other vegetarian versions of kibine, which are instead filled with spinach and cheese, for example. There are many more Lithuanian dishes you'll encounter, 
but the ones mentioned are typically the most mentioned among foreigners as dishes to try. So where can you find these foods? Well, we had our meal at a place called Stenkutis, located in the Vilnius Old Town. This place has more of a pub and bar vibe to it, meaning that it's much more casual, even to the point that you'll have to walk up to the bar to place your order. This usually translates into prices being a little bit lower though. For full-service restaurants, here are some recommendations for places to research. The first Lithuanian restaurant I ever went to in the country was Bernelu Užika. There are a few locations for this restaurant, one in Vilnius, and according to its website, three in Konis. Etno Dvaras is another popular place to go to. There are apparently five of these in Vilnius, as well as two in Panabegis. Konis, Klaipeda, and Truskininke each have one. Finally, Cat Pedelele is a chain of restaurants that also serves Lithuanian food. There are four in Vilnius, two in Klaipeda, as well as one in Šolė and one in Konis. It's one that I've yet to try personally, so if you've been there, leave a comment to let me and others know if it's worth visiting. I'll leave links to all these restaurants in the video description so that you can search for their locations and check out their menus and prices. There are probably many other great Lithuanian restaurants out there, but the ones mentioned are probably the most well known. But that's it for our must try Lithuanian food video. I hope you found this information useful. Leave a comment down below if and when you discover which of these dishes is your favorite. My thanks again to Jessie for the collaboration. She will more than likely be appearing in future videos, so be sure to subscribe to see what other interesting topics we cover on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.